Hi, I'm Derek. Welcome to our tour of the Field Management System, or FMS. It's the backbone of the arena's scoring and communication system, and we hope this video makes it more transparent to you. All this detail is covered in the FMS white paper released by FIRST and announced in Frank's FRC blog last August. The FMS encompasses all the controls for the field, creating match schedules, managing all field hardware, scoring the matches in real time, posting information to the audience screen, and posting results to the web. Controlling an FRC robot requires two core components, a robot with an onboard C-Rio controller and the operator's netbook running the FRC driver station software. The FRC robot control system is built such that the driver station is the master controller. In other words, the status and actions of the robot are determined by commands from the driver station. Communication from the driver station can go one of three ways. Using the radio in the netbook, a separate radio, like the access point used on the playing field, or through a tether. On the competition field, communication packets from a driver station are routed through the managed switches in the station control cabinet and scorpion case to the field access point, which then transmits the packets wirelessly to the appropriate robot. The FMS software communicates with each driver station via the field network and employs team-specific VLANs to isolate each team's data traffic. The FMS software does not communicate with the robots directly. Instead, FMS gathers data from the driver station about the robot's status and tells the driver station which state and mode the robot should be in, as well as the player station position and alliance color. If you see your team's stack light flashing during a match, that indicates that FMS does not think your driver station has a connection to your robot. There are two main ways for this condition to occur. The driver station is not communicating with FMS, or the driver station is telling FMS that it cannot communicate with the robot. The FMS software configures the managed switches and access point before each match to ensure the data and communications for each team is kept separate from others. Specifically, each team has its own VLAN within which all data is passed. The characteristics of a VLAN ensure that the command packets from one team's driver station do not cause a response on another team's robot. These VLANs exist on both the wired and wireless side of the playing field's network. This is why, for example, it's necessary for a team in blue player station number one to connect their driver station into the corresponding cable for that station. On the wireless side of the network, the VLANs are configured in the field access point by broadcasting an SSID for each of the six teams on the field, each with its own encryption passkey. These VLANs are configured prior to the start of each match so that only the six teams assigned in FMS may operate on the field. This is why it's necessary to configure your D-Link radio at the kiosk at each event your team attends. Once the process of setting up all the VLANs on the playing field is complete, through a process FRC calls Match Pre-Start, the FMS starts sending out command packets to the six driver stations. When a team plugs their driver station into the Ethernet cable for their assigned player station, the driver station receives these command packets from FMS and switches over into FMS mode. At this point, FMS Connected is displayed on the driver station operation tab. When in FMS mode, the driver station continues to serve as the master controller for the robot, but state and mode are dictated by the FMS. The FMS tells the driver station what to do, and the driver station then tells the robot. You can use practice mode at home to simulate match timing. FMS mode is used when you're connected to the field network. The two modes do have some differences, but the majority of the functions are identical. Both operating modes step through the same states, which are listed and described in more detail in the FMS white paper. In practice mode, unplugging a joystick will result in the robot being switched to disabled. This is designed to be a safety feature, as the robot may be running in a variety of environments that might not be equipped with barriers to safely contain the robot. Unplugging a joystick in FMS mode will not result in the robot being disabled. If a joystick becomes disconnected, simply plugging it back in will not result in it returning to normal operation. The user must press F1 on the driver station to manually rescan the USB interface to redetect the joystick. More details are included in the FMS white paper. Finally, the network port used by the driver station to send command packets to the robot is different in practice mode from the one used in FMS mode. Details about network ports open on the playing field are included in the FMS white paper and the arena section of the FRC game manual. The practice field at your event isn't integrated into the FMS at all. It uses a different access point and doesn't employ VLANs. 
In fact, if you want to operate without a tether on the practice field, you'll need to use a first supplied radio that's configured specifically to operate with a practice field access point. So far, we've been talking about infrastructure that's been in place for a few years. However, we want to make you aware of some differences being implemented for the 2013 season. First, we've incorporated bandwidth limiting. Each team has a bandwidth limit of 7 megabits per second while on the competition field. We strongly recommend that you incorporate this bandwidth limit for practice at home to mimic the FMS environment. Details on how to do this and more information are included in the FMS white paper. Second, the FMS now gives control and status packets the highest priority on the network. What this means is that even though teams may be using more network bandwidth, robot control and status packets are prioritized over other user data, like camera feeds. Third, we've changed the antenna used on the field access point. The new antenna provides improved signal strength and is directionally focused on the playing field. We hope this helps you understand the conditions to expect when on the field and how they may differ from the conditions at home or the practice field. Good luck!